you have to take it out within the 10th year with one exception. Yeah, and it's a big one. I've um, got a couple RMD questions, Alan. Do we? Okay. Yeah, we got uh, Greg writes in uh, from Temecula and then David from Taga. Taga K. Taga K. Taga? Taga K? Cool. I want to go. So I guess a couple of weeks ago, we were, we were talking about this 10-year rule, the SECURE Act. Right. And then it was like, you asked for a reference about inherited IRAs by non-spouse having to take an RMD every year in the 10-year window. In Forbes, IRS notice. Forbes. <laughs> and IRS notice. Uh, 2022 slash 5-3 will apply to 2023 distribution year. They are not going to penalize anyone who did not take distributions at 21 or 22. The IRS proposed the change in 2022 and said it will finalize in 2023. Joe said he didn't know anything about this. It's supply proof. Maybe someone in the office has heard about this and give you a little bit more clarity. And then David kind of followed up and he goes, hey, I was listening to the most recent episode on my drive home last night. I believe Joe and Al were called out by a listener regarding inherited IRAs and the impact of the SAFE Act. The caller was likely referring to the recent notice below. Thanks for all your spitballs. I think you meant Secure Act. So let's clear up all this confusion now. Yeah, let, yeah, let's clear it up. Well, all per, right. first of all, what are we talking about? We're talking about a required minimum distribution, and there are no more basically RMDs after the Secure Act. So prior to the SECURE Act that was signed a couple of years ago, if you were a non-spouse beneficiary and if you inherited an IRA, you could stretch out the tax liability over your life expectancy. Got it. So you're six years old. Yeah. And so you have a pretty low RMD at the start. Because <laughs> 180th. <laughs> you're, you're, something you're gonna, like that. You're going to live to 86 years old. All right. But, so, but nevertheless, you got to take a little bit each year. You could stretch it out over your life. Yeah. And there was confusion and there's still confusion because people were like, well, I inherited an IRA. I don't have to take a distribution until I turn 70 and a half. Right. Uh, that's when the, the, the RMD age was 70 and a half. Yeah. No, now it's age 72. But anytime you inherit a retirement account, there is there was an RMD, but you were able to stretch it out over your life expectancy. So the tax impact wasn't awful. Right. And the IRS knew this, and they were just like, they're just parlaying, like people that had very large IRAs were just parlaying wealth left and right because, you know, kids would inherit millions of dollars in retirement accounts, and then they could stretch the tax out over many, many, many years. So they were like, okay, well, let's close this loophole. And so now when you inherit a retirement account, you have to take the money out within 10 years. Yeah, if you're not a spouse. If you are a non-designated beneficiary. Right. And there's like five more. Like, for example, if you're disabled or minor child, things like that. Yeah. So there's a few exceptions. But for the most of us, non-designated beneficiary, or I, I believe that's a term, has to take it out within 10 years. Right. And you don't have to take it out each year. You have to take it out within the 10th year with one exception. Yeah. And it's a big one. If the owner of the IRA died... After his required beginning date, and what your required beginning date is April 1st, the year after you turn 72. Sure. So let's say you're, you inherit someone's retirement account that is 80 years old. So now you inherit the account. You have to take his or her RMD because let's say that 80-year-old didn't take the RMD, right? Passed away deceased. You're the beneficiary. As soon as that person dies, you are now the beneficiary owner of that. So you are responsible for the funds out of that account. So if that owner didn't take an RMD that year, you still, the, the RMD still has to come out of that account. Sure. Okay. And also you will have to follow the RMD schedule of the deceased. And then by the 10th year, everything has to come out. Right. So a little confusing. It is confusing. And and it's even more confusing than that because there's different life expectancy tables and all kinds of stuff. However, I will maybe say it very simply, required beginning date. And you're right, April 1st of the year after you turned 72. So if the, the person that you inherited this IRA from 
was passed April 1st, the following year after age 72. Let's just say 73. Yeah, if they were taking required yeah. distributions. Yeah, yeah. So you, you basically have to continue in their footsteps and, and take at least as much as they did for year one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10, you have to distribute everything else, whatever's left over. But you could take more than the RMD each Always. year. And that's true in any case. And that's why it's a required minimum. That, that's right. Now, on the other hand, if you inherit, like, let's say you inherit an IRA from somebody that's 69 70. years old, 70, whatever, before their required beginning date, that rule doesn't apply. You can wait till year 10 if you want to and withdraw all the proceeds out at that time. And that was that was from that notice 2022-53, which was done this year by the IRS because it wasn't very clear before then, because it seemed to most professionals, us included, is that you could wait till the 10th year on everybody, basically following the five-year rule. But that it turned out the IRS wasn't thinking that way, or our politicians weren't thinking that way. So they clarified that. Then when they clarified it, they said, well, you should have taken them in 2021 and 2022. So you're going to be penalized. And there was such an outroar on that, that they came back and said, okay, we're going to, we're going to forget the penalties for 2021, 2022. We're going to start this in 2023. But I want to say one more thing. And that is that the regulation 2022-53. It's not even a regulation. It's not. Yeah, it's a notice. Yeah, it's a notice. It's not even law yet. It, the final is going to come out in 2023. So we don't even know for sure. So then you don't even have to take the RMD in 2023. You'll be waived to 2024. <laughs> who, and then by 2024, they're going to have a Secure Act 3.0. <laughs> who knows? That, that's going to change the whole DM system again. But at the moment, let's we'll go off this notice, even though it's not final, and just say, if you inherit the IRA before the the decedent's required beginning date, then you can do whatever you want. But you do have to withdraw everything by year 10. And again, this is non-spouse beneficiaries. Yeah, true. Right. So if it's a spouse, you can always roll the spouses into your own if you want. You can keep it in the decedent's whatever. It's probably best to, to combine, but there's other things that you got to consider there too, depending on the age differential of the spouses and so on. Sure. But the 10-year rule in the SECURE Act is... I'm just going to keep it simple. It's a non-spouse beneficiary. There are some exceptions that can still stretch, but for yep. the most part, it's um, for the rest of us, those are the rules. Are you prepared for retirement? Schedule a free financial assessment with an experienced financial professional right online at purefinancial.com.